this episode, we return to Windermere Fire Station 31, the city of Edmonton's first net zero building and a marvel of modern construction. In episode one, we explored the building's foundation, its structural elements, and the ways weather can affect a project. But what design, engineering, and construction steps had to be taken to reach net zero? Find out on this episode of Behind Our Builds with PCL Construction. Along with the geothermal system discussed in Episode 1, energy for Station 31 is provided by an array of 382 solar panels with a rated capacity of 143 kilowatts. The panels are spread across the striking south-facing roof, which is gently sloped to capture the sun's rays most effectively. The design maximizes the generation of solar energy and minimizes heat gain. The angle of the solar panels were designed for the angle that would be uh, optimum for the Edmonton area. So you couldn't take this design and put it in Calgary or put it in any other location. So a very subtle swoop is designed around the sun's movement. But solar and geothermal energy alone are not enough to make a net zero building. Perhaps the most important consideration is the design and construction of the building's envelope. The physical separator between the conditioned and unconditioned environment that resists the unwanted transfer of air, water, heat, light, or noise. The envelope itself is a really heavily designed envelope. We have virtually no uh, thermal bridging, which is an excellent building envelope. We've reduced the amount of glazing down to 14% of the building. Superintendent Andrew Brennan was tasked with overseeing the construction of Station 31. So the makeup of the exterior of the building, it's an eight inch steel stud. Then you've got the exterior drywall board and onto that drywall, you've got six inches of spray foam, which then gives you that air tightness of the building. And then you've got an air gap behind the brick face. Set in those walls are triple glazed windows that limit the amount of solar radiation that enters the building. This helps keep the interior cool in the summer and reduces the amount of energy required for air conditioning. One sustainable touch that the team is particularly proud of is the bifolding doors that allow the trucks in and out. Those bifold doors open two and three quarters seconds faster than an overhead door goes up. And that may sound almost minuscule, but in reality, when those doors are opening 4,000 times a year, that adds up to hours and hours that those doors are closed more often than not. There are also a high R value in the doors, even though we have a great deal of uh, glazing in the doors. Deputy Fire Chief Tiffany Edgecombe says those will require a little adaptation on the part of firefighters. Obviously, there's impacts to how we operate a fire hall. I mean, we have the bifold doors, for example. We understand that the operation of the bifold better supports that net zero goal, uh, but that's a new concept for us and we need to be able to adapt and be flexible to, to the needs of the community and the city. So our response time is one of our number one key performance indicators and we can't compromise on that. And so we're really happy with the solution that it meets both goals. Other measures the team took to increase sustainability and occupant health included the maximization of natural light to reduce energy loads and improve occupant comfort, landscape innovations to manage stormwater, in-slab heating, and the installation of the Netterman exhaust extraction system. There's a magnetic connection with the fire truck, so when they come back from a call out, it's magnetic attached to the exhaust. So once they get ready to go on the next call, the exhaust is connected to the truck, they start up the truck, the exhaust goes into the system and doesn't fill the space. These innovations are helping the city of Edmonton protect the health of firefighters and meet its net zero commitments. You know, the, the city has got uh, its policies and its goals of being uh, emissions, net emissions zero by 2040 across the board. And this building has helped us explore those things. Projects like this push the envelope and, and force us into those places that allow those technological solutions to be, you know, dreamed up, put forward and, and uh, determined. So, you know, checks all the boxes. It's a wonderful facility. 
Great to see you at the Southwest Edmonton. Stay tuned for Episode 3 of Behind Our Builds with PCL Construction. The building is designed to be resilient to almost anything nature can throw at it. I mean, what it needs to fire is being able to better serve our community. And from a city perspective, we're really proud of this being the first net zero building in Edmonton. So it's a huge accomplishment for our entire team. 